So we've got the different waves. So we've got the P wave, the QRS, the T wave. Um, but what we also have is there's different segments of those complexes. Um, as you know, we you see a little arrow down here at the bottom, time. As we read light, right or left to right, as we read left to right, it, it, it signifies time. And we're going to talk about how the paper and time here in just a minute, but it signifies time. So the longer the strip goes, the, the you know, longer in time it is. So if certain portions of our QRS complex or certain portions of, of, of this waveform is spread out, taking longer time, that means the electrical activity is taking longer to get through the heart. So it, it helps us identify what the rhythm is later on. Uh, also helps us identify possible problems uh, with the conduction system. So there's a couple of of segments that we measure. Uh, one of them is the PR interval, or often referred to as PRI. You can see it down here. And the way we measure that is we measure from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the Q wave here. So right where it dips below the line or right where it's supposed to dip below the line. All right, so the PR or the PRI, PR interval, is from the beginning of the P wave to where the Q wave starts. All right, we're going to go over how to measure it and all that sort of stuff. Right now, we're just identifying it so you can see where it is. Okay? The PR, PR interval, the PRI, is from the beginning of the P wave, so right where the... Uh, so on this one, it'd be from right here, right where the P wave starts. It goes all the way until where the Q wave is. So where this thing drops back below the isoelectric line, right about there, that's what I would call my PRI. Everybody see that? So we'll go to this one right here. So it's where my P wave starts, which is right about here. And it goes until the Q wave starts. And right here, about right about here is where it drops below the isoelectric line. So this right here would be my PR interval or PRI as it's referred to as sometimes. So that is our PR interval. The next thing we have to worry about is the ST segment. Okay? And this one does not have the ST segment labeled. So we will go to another one. That one. One of these has it. There we go. ST interval. ST segment. There we go. Okay. So the ST segment, and this is going to be important because we're going to actually do something with this after a while, but the ST segment starts at the J point. So if we all know where the J point is, we know where the ST segment starts. ST segment starts at that J point and it goes all the way to the beginning of the T wave. So right where that T wave, whether it goes positive or negative, right where that T wave is. Okay? Everybody good with that? And then in between the PRI and the ST segment, we have this QRS complex. And we actually measure that um, as a whole as well. And it measures from the beginning of where, you know, where it changes off the isoelectric line. So in this case, we have a Q wave. So right where that Q wave starts, and it ends at that J point. It ends where that S wave comes back up. And it hits that isoelectric line. Good. Yeah, Q wave or, or the beginning of this complex. So if you don't have a Q wave, it would be the R wave. But from the beginning of that complex until it hits that J point. Okay? So we have. The PRI or the PR interval, beginning of the P wave till the beginning of the QRS complex. The QRS complex, which is from the beginning of the Q wave there all the way till the J point, or where the S, S wave comes back to the isoelectric line, 
and then the ST segment, which is from that J point all the way to the beginning of the T wave. So on the sound where the where the J point is just like a dot. Uh huh. It's going to be pretty small, isn't it? Yeah, you would say it's tiny, and you'd kind of, you kind of, you know, it's just where that J point is from where. Yeah, sometimes it may be it may be very little, but but the main thing is is to recognize where that ST segment is. Okay. So, let's do that. Let's take our, our three strips we got there. All right. Let's 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 identify the PRI, the PR interval, the QRS interval, and that ST segment. So let's talk about, we're going to talk a little bit about measuring now, okay? So we're all, we're all good with, with all the waves and the segments, an isoelectric line and all that. We're kosher with that. Um, so next, we're going to talk about paper. All right, so everybody's got some paper? Okay, we're going to, we're going to do some math here, okay? So take your, shows, take your shoes off if you need to. Whatever you got to do to count. I got 11. You got 11? <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Where does old paper go? Alright, so the papers look a lot the same, don't they? I bet they're identical. One says physio on it, one says old on it, but I'm betting they're pretty much the same. Alright, so we're gonna do do some figuring here, do some ciphering. Alright, so one thing we know about our monitors is that they print. We know from left to right we're talking about time, right? The farther we go along, the more time has elapsed. So we do know that all of our monitors print at 25 millimeters a second. Okay? We know that on this, these little, little tiny boxes on here, you can see there's, there's big, the big red bold lines are a big box, and then inside of the big box is a 5 by 5 square of small boxes. Right? Everybody see that? So we do know... See if I can get it here. That one of these small boxes is one millimeter. Okay? So in one second, it's going to print 25 of those squares. Is everybody with me on that? Okay? We know that there are five of those squares in each one of these boxes here. Yes, that is a five, not an S. All right, so we know that there are five squares in each side of one of those boxes, right? So, how many, how many of these big red boxes is it going to take to equal a second? Five of them, right? One, two, three, four, and five, right? Okay. So, how much is one of these boxes in, in seconds? 0.2 seconds, because there's five of them. So, if each one's 0.2, this is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1. Right? We good with that? So each one of these giant red boxes that aren't so giant on your paper, but on my screen there. So this, this right here, is 0 0.2 seconds in time. Okay? You probably have your, your little ruler there in front of you. I don't have one. Um, but I bet on that ruler it has a, a, a 0.2 marking on there somewhere. It has a 0 and it has a 0.2. Hey, it matches up. Does it match up? Yeah. Does it match up on the Zoll and on the uh, Physio paper? Uh, Most likely. Okay. All right. So we now know that one of these boxes, as far as I know, is so that one of these big boxes is 0.2 seconds. All right. So inside of this one square, this 0.2 second square, it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five small squares. All right, so in the back, question? Sure can, what color do you want? Okay, is it, is it hard to see back there? Oh, it is, I'm sorry. How about a, how about a nice magenta? Um, how, let me try. Is that better? That is better. I'm sorry. I didn't look at the screen. It looks great. It looks great up here. <laughs> All right. So here, I'll, I'll do this. All right. So that's one of those big squares there. Okay. So there's five squares in, the, in, in a 0.2 second box here. So I heard somebody say, well, well, how many is one of these little squares? 0 0.04. All right. So one of these little bad boys right here is 
is 0 0.04 seconds. Is everybody okay with that? Does that make sense? Do you have a, a 0 0.04 marking on your uh, little ruler? Probably not, do you? No, it's pretty small. Okay, so each little box, 0 0.04. The big red box is 0 0.2. And then how many of these big, big red boxes does it take to get to a second? All right, so five of them. So we'll say one, two, three, four, five of them right here. All right. That's one second. All right, so um, how many are in three seconds? Fifteen boxes. Two, three, four, five. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. What's that now? How many big boxes? Yeah, we're working in big boxes right now. I'm sorry. You're right. All right, so I think that's 15 boxes. You get the idea. All right, so that's three seconds, right? All right, so how many boxes are in six seconds? 30. Okay. Now, why is six seconds important to us? We might know why six seconds would be an important number for us to remember. All right, well, one of the first things we're going to do when we start talking about measuring or, or we talk about figuring heart rate or figuring what these rhythms are is heart rate. And what we can do is we can look at how many complexes, when we're talking about a bradycardic rhythm, we can look at how many complexes there are in a six second strip and multiply that by. 10 to get our heart rate, okay? So knowing 30 boxes may be able to help, maybe it'll give you your six second strip, right? Now are you, do you, is there, do you have to count 30 boxes? Because that's kind of a pain, right? That's 30 boxes while you're moving down the back of the ambulance, right? Well, Physio was nice enough to print three second markers on the paper. So, if you look at the top of the paper, you see little red tick marks about every 15 boxes. See it on there? Does everybody see those little tiny red marks on there? On, on, the, on the physio? One of those is three seconds. So three seconds between those those hash marks, whatever you want to call them. Okay. So if we're going to look at a strip real quick, we can just print it off and we can look and go, okay, there's one hash mark, there's two. When I hit my third one, the area between those two is six seconds, right? Good with that. Okay. Now Zoll Zoll has those big black marks. See the big black marks on there? That's the between the black and, and that's why it's, if you have two, you have one thing. Okay. If you have two. You can see how the distance between the two there, those black marks. Now, if you count the boxes between those black marks, it's not exactly 15. Or it's a little bit more, it's more like 18 boxes. So it's it's close on the Zoll, it's not it's not exact. Okay. But it's gonna give you an idea. That's why it's a lot easier to see than the little tiny lines on the physio. Right? You know, the physio is gotta look for them, but on the Zoll I can see my big giant black half marks and I know that 